Hello and welcome. In the previous class, we explored the ARP table, basically any device that is connected to the router in any of the broadcast domains is going to be able to get a dynamic entry in the ARP table, and that means that the device will be able to have network connectivity. But uh, sometimes we can increase our security if that's a requirement. And to do that, we can have a static entries in the ARP table only. If we have a device that is joining the network, then we must add an entry into the ARP table, and now the router will be able to exchange frames with that device. If there is no entry in the ARP table, then that device won't have network connectivity. So that can increase somehow the level of security in our network. So in this class, we learn how to do that. Basically, we need two steps. The first one is to add a static entry into the ARP table. And the second one is that we need to tell the interface where those devices will be connected, that they will be replying only to devices that have a static entry in the ARP table. So let's explore that in our device. So basically, that is the ARP table. So you can see that we have several dynamic entries. So the first step is to create a static entry. So there we have two options. The first one, if the device is already connected and there is a dynamic entry in that router, we can simply convert that entry to a static entry. Another option, we can simply convert that dynamic entry into a static entry. The second option is if the device is not in our network and there is no dynamic entry. So in that case, we can manually add a new entry and will require the IP address, will require the MAC address and the interface where we are expecting that device in the future. After having that static entry, we'll go with the step number two. And that step is basically going to the interface where those devices will be connected and will enable the R mode with the reply only value. Reply only means that the router is only going to reply to devices that have a static entry in that ARP table. So let's see how that is going to work in our environment. So if I check on GNS3, so now the interface Ether3 has those three PCs connected to it. But I can add one more PC that can be an unauthorized PC, but we are not aware of that device that is joining the network. And also that device will be able to have network connectivity. We don't want that. So in, in this case, we only want devices that we trust, devices that we have manually authorized in the art table. So that's going to be the first step. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the router. And you can see that now I have those three PCs, 197, 198, and 199. So I'm going to convert those dynamic entries, because I already have the information, into static entries. So I'm going to go with the first one. I simply need to double click on that entry and then I can click on make static. Now you can see that the flag for dynamic has disappeared. I do the same with the remaining two devices connected to Ether3. 198, make static. 199, make static. So now we have those three devices with static entries. But still, if I connect a new device, the router is going to create a dynamic entry for new devices. Those three will remain in the table forever. They won't expire, but we don't want dynamic devices. So that's why we need a second step. And the second step is that we need to go to Ether3 and we need to change the ARP mode to reply only. And that is under interfaces. So I will go here to interfaces. I will look for Ether3. I will double click on Ether3. And then here we have the ARP configuration. So by default, that's enabled. That means that the router is going to be replying to those ARP request messages and is going to talk to all those devices. If the router is trying to, to talk with a device and there is no entry in the ARP table, it's going to send the ARP request message and then it's going to get that dynamically. But we don't want that. So basically, we are going to change that ARP to reply only. And this is only going to talk to devices that are in the R table with an static entry. And now that interface 
will be exchanging messages only with devices that have a static entry. So I'm going to click OK. And if I go back to the R table, I will try to ping those devices. So for example, 192.168.3.197, we can see that we have network connectivity. No problems, because the router has a static entry and has the MAC address for those devices. So at this point, if we have a new device joining the network, that device is not going to get a dynamic entry. And we can test that just by adding a new PC. So I will add another VPC here, and I will connect that to the switch. I will start the device, and I will use DHCP to get an IP address. So I will come to the console and I will say IP DHCP. We can see that the device is going through the Dora process, so that is going to work. And also that device got an IP, 3.196. But let's see what happens if that device tries to ping one IP on internet. So you can see the timeout. So this device is looking for the MAC address of the router but the router is not going to send its information because that IP is lacking of the entry in the art table. And we can see that just by going to the router. If I see there, I don't see the dynamic entry for that IP because we have reply only in that interface. Please note that uh, if that device tries to reach devices in the same network, that is going to work because that connection can be going directly here in that switch, so the traffic is never going to hit the router. That is going to apply only if that device is trying to reach remote networks. So let's try that. For example, if I come here and I try to ping 192.168.3.199, that works because they are in the same network and those frames are just going from that PC to the switch and then to the destination they will never reach the router. But if that PC tries to reach a remote network, the traffic is going to be sent to the Mac on the router, but the router is not going to provide that information. And then that PC won't be able to talk to remote devices. So if I need to provide network connectivity, I have to get the MAC address of that device, and then I have to add a static entry. So I will go to PC9, and I will use the show IP command and here we have the MAC address. So I will copy that value. And now we can go to the router and we are going to add an entry. So this is the MAC address. Let's uh, copy that again. So I have that value. And the IP is 192.168.3.196. The interface Ether3. We can click on Apply and OK. So now we have a static entry. If I go back to that PC and I try to send a pin again, now you can see that this device is able to have network connectivity because the IP is mapping the MAC address with a static entry. And that router now is able to deliver frames to that device and also is going to reply with the router's MAC address because we have reply only in that interface. This is how we can increase the security in our local area network by using static entries with the R protocol. Obviously, we are not going to rely only on that level of security, but that is going to help. In the upcoming class, we'll see how to use DHCP to dynamically create those entries in the R table. In that way, we are not going to allow everyone to add entry there. That is going to be performed only via DHCP. So we'll explain the benefits in the upcoming class. Thank you, and I see you in the next one.